Turkey is now the only NATO country which can have a dialogue with uh, Russia and we are doing our best to resolve this unnecessary uh, war, yes. I think it's, a, it's becoming a chicken and egg situation. <laughs> we are now uh, mediating to establish a humanitarian corridor for grains. Our relations with Russia, our relations with Ukraine is equally strong. We are very grateful to Bangladesh because Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sent a solidarity message to our president. Let's start with our economic uh, ties, you know. Once upon a time, Turkey was a very good garment manufacturer as well, very high-end mm -hmm. garment manufacturing. Not department. once upon a time, it still is. Still is, is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, now, I mean, Bangladesh is also catching up on that. Yeah, yeah. So, what is your opinion about Turkish investment in Bangladesh and trade? Yes, trade and investments are uh, on the top of our agenda, you know. Yes. Uh, it's a priority for us to, you know, increase our trade. Uh, both imports and exports are increasing. Uh, when I came here in 2020, mm -hmm. uh, the overall trade volume was around 850 million dollars. Uh, it's quite a balanced trade, you know, okay. uh, imports and exports. 850 million both ways. Both or? ways. Both ways. So now it's uh, past last year uh, 1 billion threshold. Okay. Uh, and our aim is to increase it up to two billion dollars in the next uh, maybe couple of years. Obviously now the world economy is going through difficult times. Yes. Uh, but uh, our exports are growing in Turkey, uh, including to Bangladesh. Uh, Turkish export to Bangladesh mainly food, food grains? Uh, no, no. Uh, we are mainly exporting uh, cotton uh, as well as machineries and chemicals to for the garments industry. Yes. Uh, we are also exporting light uh, mm -hmm. machineries, uh, not <coughs> just for uh, garments industry, but also uh, for the agro industry. You know, uh, I was attending a fair mm -hmm. called uh, Agrotech Fair okay. recently, and there were more than twenty. Turkish companies, they provide turnkey solutions <coughs> for uh, flour mills, okay. milling, flour milling, and also silos, mm -hmm. for example. Uh, so a lot of uh, those type of uh, small And Turkey imports from Bangladesh aren't you? No, uh, we are s importing some around 100, 150 million dollars. Yes. But most, uh, the item which we import most is jute, right. uh, because we use it in the carpet industry. Carpet industry. Yes. You know, jute is uh, very important. We buy uh, jute. annually uh, around 300 million dollars worth of jute from Bangladesh. So why do you see the scope for increasing trade? We are working on some complementary areas, like uh, for example, uh, we can uh, buy more may maybe pharmaceutical related products because Bangladesh has a good pharm pharmaceutical industry uh, going up uh, and ICT services maybe uh, could be an interesting place. So is there any effort actually to uh, tap the pharmaceutical industry? Yes, no. our uh, Ministry of Health uh, sent a few delegations uh, in the past years uh, to look into the uh, factories and uh, you know some of the companies to who check are with the standards. Yes, yes. Okay. So, for example, I visited the Square Pharma uh, right. in Gazipur, and they have a very good facility there. Uh, and uh, I I heard from them that there was a delegation uh, which came from Turkey mm. to to see their facility and. But I I'm quite hopeful because uh, especially generic drugs. Yeah, you know, yeah. uh, will be more significant in the future because they are more affordable and uh, okay. but equally effective. We are trying to explore. We create some uh, B2B uh, meetings between our companies and yes. companies here. Uh, actually, after I came, we signed an MOU. Uh, there is a 
there is in Turkey we have Bangladesh Turkey Business Council uh, and they signed an agreement with FPCCI uh, to you know facilitate trade and investments uh, B2B meeting through B2B meetings uh, recently maybe you heard and reported it uh, BIDA organized a, a roadshow in Turkey for promoting Bangladesh as an investment destination. We have uh, facilitated the formation of uh, a Bangladesh-Turkey uh, business forum in Bangladesh uh, where 10 uh, big uh, Bangladeshi companies are participating. Uh, we already established it. Uh, Rubana Haq uh, will be the chairperson and uh, Mr. Uh, Salatin Qasim Khan of the AK Khan, uh, you know, the, the founder of the chairman of AK Khan, will be the co-chair person. Okay. Uh, a high power. Yes, yes. Uh, and there's Square, there's United, you know, BSRM, uh, Ispahani, okay. you know, uh, all the big na uh, companies. Big are all yeah, the yeah, they're so all there. And, and from Turkish part, there will be? Yes, six companies. Six companies. Uh, we have two big investors in Bangladesh. Uh, from Turkey. One is uh, iGaz. iGaz is uh, the biggest investor. It's uh, an LPG company. Okay. You know, uh, they uh, they distribute, fill and distribute uh, LPG cylinders yes. to the households. You yeah. know, the yeah. small cylinders. Are they working with the Bangladeshi investors here? Yes, uh, United Group. United. So they have 50-50 okay. uh, partnership. Okay. So they have built a, a huge uh, filling station in uh, Chittagong okay. port. Uh, they will soon start distributing. Uh, they are waiting for uh, two more licenses. So another company is uh, uh, Archelik. Archelik is a household uh, electronics and appliances company. So they are uh, producing electronics in Bangladesh? In Bangladesh. Oh, right. they, they have their factories. They, they took over yes. Singer yes. Bangladesh's Singer. factories okay. and updated them like okay. with new okay. um, you know, uh, machinery and okay. production line. I mean. They are now going to invest in uh, the Japanese, uh, you know, special economic zone well, uh, for a new new factory. Uh, so these are two big Turkish companies, uh, and both of them, interestingly, are subsidiaries of Koç Group in Turkey. They are the only uh, Fortune 500 company in okay. Turkey, okay. Uh, and produce eight percent of our GDP. We have. Uh, one, of course, Turkish Airlines is uh, one of our big uh, companies here, flying two times a day uh, to Turkey. Turkish Air, yeah. Turkish Airlines. Yeah, yeah. The fourth company is uh, a LC Waikiki in RMG sector. They are exporting from Bangladesh more than 150 million dollars worth of RMG exports. You know, they work with factories here and. They don't have buying houses. They don't work with buying houses. They're they work directly the with okay. the manufacturers, right. Right. Uh, the producers. And also we have one uh, consultancy company called NKY. Mm -hmm. And they are one of our best consultancy companies. Mm -hmm. They're working with uh, city corporations uh, for land surveys, you know, uh, you know building uh, surveys. They do surveys. Uh, it's a. There are uh, very professional architects and engineers who do surveys you know, through this company, and we are. We also have a, a, a contracting company which built our own embassy compound, and we are hoping that construction sector, you know, the, our contracting companies, uh, are showing growing interest in Bangladesh, since Bangladesh uh, requires. To infrastructure. requires a lot of infra infrastructure for the economy to grow. Uh, they are becoming more and more interested uh, in Bangladesh. And uh, we are also discussing with the PPP authority. Uh, we want to sign an MOU, a G2G MOU with PPP authority. But there are no major Turkish infrastructure. No, no not yet. But uh, they are bidding now. For example, one company 
is bidding for uh, a Dhaka Wasser uh, uh, project, a uh, water treatment project. Water treatment, yeah. Right. Another company is bidding for uh, a power plant project, 450 uh, megawatt power pr uh, plant. Right, right. Another company has recently uh, visited me and uh, they had a lot of meetings in Bangladesh on railways, for example. Railway. Yeah, yeah. And other companies interested in building highways uh, and uh, bridges. You know, we have just recently built in Turkey mm. uh, the fourth bridge that connects Asia to Europe. And it's the longest hanging bridge. Um, you know, the hanging bridges are better for the rivers because, yeah. uh, you know, when you have uh, columns in, yeah. in, the, in the riverbed, you know, they change the course of the, the, course of the river. Yes. Yes. They make more pressure on the yes, banks. On the banks. Yes. We understand that there has been a close link between Russia, Turkey and mm. China right now. How do you, how do you see, mm, look at this, uh, and, and, and Turkey is a NATO member, very yes. important NATO member, and very recently mm. we have seen that mm. Turkey vetoed uh, in Sweden and uh, uh, Finland. Well, Turkey. we didn't veto. Yes, we are a member of NATO. Uh, we are a member of other international organizations, mm -hmm. but that doesn't prevent us from pursuing our own national interest, right? Mm -hmm. yes. uh, so, uh, what we do is we try to reconcile our national interests with those of NATO. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, we are one of the big contributors to, the, to NATO in mm -hmm. terms of the security infrastructure, the manpower. Yeah. Uh, after the United States, we have the second largest army uh, mm -hmm. in NATO, and the you know our defense industry is uh, progressing really fast. We are now producing uh, more than 80 percent of our domestic uh, need for defense industry. Only 20 percent we buy from other countries. Mm -hmm. So that means we are also exporting a lot. Yes. So. With this independent foreign policy, uh, we talk with all countries. Mm -hmm. We talk with Russia, mm -hmm. we talk with China, we talk with Ukraine. You know, a lot of people misunderstand mm -hmm. our relations with Russia. Mm -hmm. Our relations with Ukraine is equally strong. Okay. Uh, we support their territorial integrity. We never accepted uh, the annexation of Crimea, for example. Mm -hmm. you know? uh, so, since the uh, beginning of this uh, war, mm. uh, we have always uh, expressed a strong opinion on mm. the territorial integrity and sovereignty of uh, Ukraine has to be protected. Yeah. You know, that, that's the basis for uh, a political settlement for us. So, uh, and we, we also have good relations with uh, Ukraine in many fields. So this gives us an opportunity to be a mediator, yes. mm -hmm. uh, you know, okay. because we also do not apply the the sanctions uh, on uh, Russia, mm -hmm. Russian Federation. Uh, so it gives us an opportunity to uh, host them for meetings in Turkey. Like most recently, uh, we are now uh, mediating mm -hmm. to establish a humanitarian corridor for grains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a corridor to export the uh, Ukrainian uh, grains mm -hmm. uh, through the uh, through the straits, uh, so that the uh, you know Ukrainian grains can be uh, exported uh, uninterrupted to you know Africa or other parts of the world. Because uh, unless we do this, there will be famine. But what we aim is to really uh, be able to uh, broker a peace deal. You know, like at yes. the highest level, yes. Uh, so that this unnecessary war Do you see can uh, stop. Uh, this, uh, is it achievable? At the moment, uh, it looks a little bit distant. Mm. Uh, we need to work more on, uh, you know, negotiations and the sides need yeah. both sides. Need Yesterday, to uh, the Russian uh, ambassador, I mean, uh, acting ambassador, she was saying that. Uh, the peace talks and everything would have been possible if the West stopped sending, uh, <laughs> sending arms to Ukraine. So, unless they do that, how can there be a peace talk? Well, uh, I think it's, a, it's becoming a 
chicken and egg situation. <laughs> you know, they were the ones to invade first, right? That's why the sanctions started. Yeah. So if they withdraw, <laughs> there will be no sanctions. You know, that's the equilibrium. It's uh, n not only affecting uh, Russian Federation, but also affecting the whole world. Uh, that's the reason why we don't apply those sanctions on Russia, because, you know, first of all, they are not agreed by the United Nations Security Council. Uh, the second is, uh, you know, we don't see that much can be achieved through sanctions. Yes. Uh, so we focus on uh, the mediation efforts between the sides, and I think they need to agree with each other. You know, uh, and I think um, for for putting the blame on the on the West on this is I think is not uh, very productive because I think if they agree between each other, mm -hmm. then the sanctions will be lifted. Obviously, if there is peace, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. So I think everybody needs to focus on the on the peace. Your relationship with Russia does it hurt your uh, no, relationship with NATO? No, no, because. Turkey is now the only NATO country which can have a dialogue with uh, Russia and it is uh, absolutely necessary. So it's, a, it's a big window for the West. Yeah, of course. You know, we are doing our best to resolve this unnecessary uh, wow. war, yes. And we don't need this war because we, we had to uh, deal with the, the fallout of the COVID crisis. There were reports uh, that uh, Turkey is having a missile base in Bangladesh, setting up a missile base. No, no. <laughs> no, no. Who said that? <laughs> Regarding the missile thing, let me clarify. We sold some multi-launcher uh, rocket missiles okay. to Bangladesh Army okay. some years ago, right? And you can see them during the victory parade. Mm -hmm. They pass in okay. front of everybody, <laughs> like we just provide the equipment the the you know the technology and the, and the, the weapons uh, and and bangladesh army decides what to do with them and recently bangladesh has also become uh, uh, one of the countries with which we cooperate very closely in defense industry because turkey uh, as i said does not attach political uh, conditions to defense industry. You were talking about your relationship with NATO. Um, why, why you think uh, you know uh, S-400 was not delivered? In the south of Turkey, we have Iran, Iraq, Syria, yeah. and when you go back in the recent history, most of the military conflicts took place in these countries. <laughs> in that. Yeah. In that area, you in these in a, countries. In other words, you are in a hot wave. Yes, and a few times, you know, we uh, were targeted by uh, these, some of these countries, yeah, like, uh, you know, Syrian uh, regime yes. were throwing uh, missiles into our territory. Uh, you know, so we need an air defense system. So we, what we did, uh, like some years ago, we wanted to buy, as a NATO ally, right, we go to our NATO allies. We said we need Patriot air defense systems. You know, Patriot is the best air defense system. But unfortunately, they didn't, uh, you know, because of political reasons, uh, they didn't uh, want to sell Patriot defense systems. Uh, so we were left with no choice but to buy another system, you know, from Russia, S-400. That's the equivalent of Patriot systems. Yes. Even if we have good relations with Russia and have a dialogue, that doesn't uh, mean that we agree on everything yes. you know, with Russia. We don't agree on Syria. We don't uh, agree on the Syria, Syria situation mm -hmm. uh, with Russia. You know, yes. uh, We don't agree on uh, some other issues. Should the Muslim majority countries and YC members uh, normalize their relationships with uh, uh, you know it, the, it it's up to each and every country to decide what they want to do right for OIC obviously I mean our policy is that uh, you know the Palestine uh, has to be recognized uh, and uh, there must be a just peace deal in the Middle East a comprehensive peace deal where uh, you know the Palestinian people can exercise their free will as an independent nation so we expect the OIC countries to support 
the Palestinian cause uh, to the full extent mm. uh, and what they will do with regard to Israel depends on their own country's foreign policy. We cannot prescribe them what to do with respect to uh, Israel. We can only decide on our own yeah. foreign policy. But Turkey is having a close link on, on terrorism, terrorism cooperation, right? Yeah. What about the Gulen movement? We call it FETO. Yeah, like we, that, that stands for uh, Fethullahist, Fethullahist terrorist organization. In the U.S., right? Yes, he and, uh, he lives in uh, in the in U.S. In the US uh, and uh, we asked for his extrad extradition, mm -hmm. uh, which was denied by the United States. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know this organization is a is a very interesting one because an interesting terrorist organization because they hide themselves really well mm -hmm. you know they they have a lot of schools they have a lot of businesses they have a lot of media outlets yeah. you know so they portray themselves as peace loving uh, yeah. nice people yeah. but at the background uh, this is the facade at the background at, at, at one point of time they had a uh, good relationship with the Erdogan Yes, well, yes, they, because you know, they, that's why I said yes. they are hiding themselves really well. Okay. Imagine our own people were also misled. Okay. So what they did was, <laughs> what they did was they, uh, you know, what they do is uh, they, um, you know, they have a lot of wealth, they have a lot of money they have, you know, in their hands. Mm -hmm. So with this money, they recruit uh, bright uh, smart kids mm -hmm. uh, from uh, you know poor neighborhoods, mm -hmm. disadvantaged groups. Okay. They give them scholarship. Mm -hmm. They go to best universities, and then in exchange, they uh, then they put them in critical positions in the government, right? Okay. In army, in the government. In my own ministry, mm -hmm. there were s more than 600 mm -hmm. FETA affiliated. A diplomat in my own ministry. Okay. Now all of them are dismissed okay. after the failed military coup yeah. they organized in 2016. Yeah. Very interesting. Very so, cool. <laughs> so, so they yeah. they put the, these uh, uh, you know people who they supported yeah. throughout their education. Yeah. Then they, in exchange, they expect them to be loyal yeah. to their organization yeah. and. They don't do anything for a very long time. Mm -hmm. yeah. Then, like they did in 2016, when the time comes, they or give them an order to and activate. Yes, activate the whole yeah. network yeah. to <laughs> take over the government. You know, that's what they try to do. They try to kill our president yes. in his hotel yeah. in Marmaris. Uh, they attacked with. You know they had pi yes. they had pilots in the Turkish Air Force. Yes. Those pilots, I was in Ankara at the time. You know yeah. they attacked our parliament. Yeah. They attacked our uh, uh, presidential compound. Yes. They attacked our police forces. You know. Mm -hmm. So, but fortunately, our president uh, called the people of Turkey yes. to take to the streets and resist this military coup, and that's what they did. 250 more, uh, two martyrs lost their lives uh, because they resisted against the tanks, the army. You know, the their because army. Fortunately, uh, most of the army uh, supported our government. It was only a mi minority. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know, in one night, one bloody, uh, unfortunate night, uh, we were able to avert this military coup with the support of the people mm -hmm. and we are very grateful to Bangladesh because uh, Prime Minister, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina you know when most of these Western countries were silent yes. in the aftermath of the coup yes. you know uh, attempted coup yeah, yeah. Uh, failed coup, yeah. Yeah. Failed coup yes. uh, Honorable Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina sent a solidarity message to our president because she knows what it means. Yes. How is uh, uh, just a very very personal question? How is uh, Kamala uh, uh, legacy regarded? Oh, he's regarded very highly. And this, you know, these are all uh, 
attempts to portray uh, President Erdogan as an, as an Islamist, as an Islamist uh, <coughs> to portray him as a you know as a kind of so that they can they can deny uh, uh, Turkey into yes to European mm -hmm. Union exactly yeah. yes that's one of the reasons but you know uh, our government Turkey is a secular country just like Bangladesh right mm -hmm. so Atatürk established as one of the principles of so his principles are still still intact, still intact uh, in our constitution protected by the constitution so and, and what about this report of a century old church being turned into a mosque oh it, well then uh, again mm -hmm. you're talking about Hagia Sophia mm -hmm. so which originally was uh, a cathedral which was built by the Byzantine Empire right yes. uh, in the fourth century it's a magnificent uh, piece of architecture, mm -hmm. you know, even our mosques, you know, Turkish mosques mm -hmm. are with domes, yeah, very big good. domes, the, the like Suleymaniye, the Blue, Blue Mosque, they're all with big domes. Yes. So they are influenced by Hagia Sophia in terms of the architecture, okay. you see? Mm -hmm. So uh, the Ottomans uh, had, a, you know, the, their architecture, because they lived in the same geography <laughs> with the Byzantium Empire, yeah. they were influenced by it. So when the Turks, the Ottomans, yes. uh, conquered Istanbul, Constantinople, Constantinople. Uh, at the time, 1453. Right. Uh, so since 15th century, there was a foundation which was created to protect the mosque, uh, Hagia Sophia. So he was the one who turned uh, the cathedral into a mosque when he conquered. Yeah, that was in 15th century, 1453. So, Hagia Sophia was used as a mosque up until the establishment of the Republic of Turkey, right? In 1923. Uh, so, when we established the Republic, you know, Atatürk was a very wise statesman, okay? So, he fought against the Greeks, the British, the Ger uh, not Germans, uh, the French, the Italians, mm. he defeated them in three, four years during our War of Independence, but he did not shy away from adopting the Western legal system, the Western calendar, Western yeah, alphabet. So he modernized yeah, our modernized. country uh, in line with Western uh, systems of modern uh, education, edu yes yeah, education right. women's yes. role you know he gave the power to vote to women in 1930s yes. long before the other countries in Europe you know women could vote in yeah. Turkey in our first election uh, you know in 1940s uh, <coughs> 1950 so what he did uh, in 1920s after the Republic was established he also, in foreign policy, wanted to have friendly relations with all the countries around us, right? Mm -hmm. uh, just like Bangabundu's yes. uh, friendship to all, malice to nine yes. policy. Atatürk's policy is peace at home, peace in the world. Yes. That's how he formulated it. Mm -hmm. Peace at home, peace in the world. Yes. So that's why he wanted to have good relations with Greece, mm -hmm. with other countries, with the Middle East, mm -hmm. everyone. So he turned uh, Hagia Sophia again into a cathedral not a cathedral into a museum museum okay it was a museum okay. because symbolically uh, that uh, Hagia Sophia is important for uh, Greek Orthodox people yeah. right yes. uh, so this was a gesture to have friendly relations mm -hmm. you know between the two countries yes. but uh, unfortunately, this friendly gesture has never been reciprocated by the Greeks. You know, there's in Greece all the mosques are closed. You know, in Athens there is no mosque. They use it as a museum. The mosques in Athens, mm -hmm. in Greece, mm -hmm. and diplomacy is based on reciprocity. reciprocity. You know, we you take a gesture, they you expect another gesture yes. from the other side, but they never show this gesture. Okay. You know. So, uh, and our government decided, President Erdogan, that, uh, you know, this mosque, uh, this Hagia Sophia was a mosque for centuries, mm -hmm. you know, from the 15th to 20th century, 500 years, it was a mosque.
mm -hmm. and we did not damage anything in mm -hmm. the you know there are a lot of uh, frescoes mm -hmm. you know in the Hagia Sophia if you if you visit there are still frescoes like Christian uh, you know things on the walls the Ottomans did not harm any of them okay. they used additional uh, things to put some calligraphy okay. you know additional uh, plates mm -hmm. of calligraphy and the Ottomans did it Ottomans did it okay. so uh, that's why uh, our president said you know uh, now we will bring Hagia Sophia back to its original status because you know uh, it, it was a mosque for 500 years and uh, our people demanded demand that it should so be a mosque. It was converted from museum to mosque. Yes, yes. Yeah. So that's the story. It took me a while to.